Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to walk through how we can use GraphQL and Entity Framework for GraphQL features like search and selection. Now for GraphQL, I have used hot chocolate as the NuGet package. And if you are not aware of GraphQL, I did a video on GraphQL sometime back, I'm going to share the link, but GraphQL is a query language for your API. This is the graphql.org, which is the official website. GraphQL is a query language for API and a runtime for fulfilling those queries with your existing data. GraphQL provides a complete and understandable description of the data in your API, gives client the power to ask exactly what they need and nothing more. So this is the key feature of GraphQL in my opinion. It gives the power to the client to ask what exactly they need and nothing more. In general, when we write APIs, API comes with standard contact. Now there are pluses and minuses with this approach. The minus of this approach is even if you don't want all the attributes, all the attributes will be returned through the wear to you. And then on the client, you have to filter things out and then read the attributes only with what you care about. GraphQL solves exactly that problem of returning only the attributes that you want. And GraphQL with entity framework, it works like a magic because the data filtering and data giving the only the attribute that you need that starts all the way from the database up to the API. So to demonstrate that, I created this project where I have two entities, data entities. One is an address, an address has an employee. This is the association between address and employee. And this is the employee, employee has ID, name, email and address has ID, employee ID, street, city, state, and zip. And the employee ID is the connection between address and the employee. And then what I have done is I have a custom DB context, which is a DB context object. And here I'm exposing addresses. And then on model creating, I have defined the employee and address, what are their table names. And then I have just associated the column names here. And then finally here, I have said that the address has at least one employee or has one employee with many. So it's a one to many relationship. And then the foreign key here is employee ID. This is standard entity framework code. I have not done anything custom here. This is all standard entity framework code. And for this particular implementation, the NuGet packages that I have added are as follows. So as I said, for the GraphQL itself, I am not using out of box GraphQL NuGet package or the NuGet package provided by the GraphQL team. I am using hot chocolate. Hot chocolate is a package for GraphQL and I'm using hotchocolate.h and hotchocolate.data.entity framework. These are the two things I am using. And then I am using the Postgres as my database. So I have entity framework Postgres, entity framework code. And I'm also using entity framework.sql server. This NuGet package is needed for the type conversion. And then one thing to keep in mind for the Postgres to work with, I have not used the latest version. I have used the one version before, 8.2.2, because the latest version doesn't seem to work with this setup. So that's something to keep in mind. And then after that, okay, before I go to the GraphQL implementation, in program, I have done the standard entity framework configuration where I added the DB context with using the PostgreSQL and providing the connection stream. And then what I've done is I created a query class and the query class is exposing the addresses as iQueryable, which is returning the db context or get addresses. 
And here I have used the attributes provided by hot chocolate, which is use paging for pagination, use projection for projection, filtering and sorting respectively. And then what I have done is here in the program, I have gone ahead and added the GraphQL server to dependency injection with a query type of query. So I'm adding a add query type, which is for configuring a query type and I'm adding the type that I define. And then I am saying that register the DB context, which is for entry framework core. And I provided the DB context and then add projection and filtering and add sorting. So this is all we need. And then finally here I'm saying app dot map GraphQL and providing a URL. So this map GraphQL is just going to expose a UI using which we can test the GraphQL. So now let me go ahead and let me start this project. As you can see, in terms of the GraphQL code is very minimal. All we did is created entity framework configuration mostly. For the GraphQL, it is just this one line. Add GraphQL server, add query type, register the DB context, add projection, filtering, and sorting, and then map GraphQL. And then we created this query type where we just exposed the data type that we want to expose. That's all we have done. Now, when we run this, it comes up with this UI, which we can use, but we can use Postman also for testing. I'm going to show the UI way, and then we can go into the schema and we can expose the schema that there is. And you can see the schema comes with the page info, which is basically for pagination, which is end cursor, has page, previous page, you know, start cursor. It has the actual model, which is part of the node, which is city, employee ID, everything that we defined in the employee object, which is internal to it. Now for the purpose of this, we can start with query. This is where we write query. And then we can define what we want. This is the model that we had. And here we will start with nodes. And in the nodes, we can define what are the data we want. So we want city and state. And then we just need the employee name. So we can ask for employee and just the name, let's say. And then after nodes, we can define the page info for pagination. And let's say we want has next page and end cursor so that we get the cursor. By default, the hot chocolate returns only 10 items per page. So if I run this query now, it's going to go into database and fetch the data for me. I have only seven records, so it is returning seven. It has has page, has next page as false because there is no next page and an end cursor. So now here you can see it has done this SQL command and you can see it is doing the join and everything appropriately as we want. Let me also quickly show the database so that you know it is clear that the database is matching the data. So here we can see we have seven addresses and seven employees in the database. So now what I can do is I can create some sort of filtering and sorting and things of that nature. So first let's start with, and it's going to be here after employee. First, let's start with how much data we want. So we can say fast two. If we do that, it's going to return only two at a time. And then what I can do is I can take this end cursor and I can say after MQ, now it's going to return me the next two record. And you can see it changed. It has gone back to the next two record. And then I can also have things like order by. And for the order, I can say order by the ID. 
let's say descending if I run this it's going to change and if I get rid of the but let me show I totally forgot I had to show the queries so you can see the queries are changing here here you can see the query it has done a limit for the purpose here also limit for the purpose of uh, the first limit was the purpose of limiting the number of records here limit with an offset which is the because I'm taking the next page here it has introduced order by and limit and offset and order by here so you can see that the query itself is changing based on what we are asking the GraphQL so it is going all the way down to entity framework core and this is why it is so powerful because it is not doing it's not getting all the data in memory in the server and doing manipulation it is sending the query only for the data that we want and that is what I think it is so powerful and apart from this we can also do things like where and if you want to do where ID is in one two three and get rid of the after and let's say past five so you're going to return me the three so it is returning the first three one two and three and just to confirm 14 12 and 10 Abe Jim and Mike these are the users so we can see Abe Jim and Mike this is the three one to three and because I have descending they're in descending order and here I did the where condition and now if I go back here you will see the latest query this is the latest query it introduced a where condition here you can see that so it is doing a where based on the query that we passed all the way down to database and this is what I think is the most powerful feature of GraphQL now if I want to show this in postman I can copy this body and I can go to the body and in body you can see this GraphQL so I can select the GraphQL paste the query here and I can send and I should see exact same result here you can see is the exact same result one two three the way we expected so that is all I wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel and you feel you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and if you have any question or any request for this video you want me to extend please drop it in the message thanks so much for watching this video